It's that time again where I do a big roundup of everything I've sewn during the year. This month marks my two year sewing anniversary and I'm still very new to sewing, so I feel like I've learned even more this year than I ever thought imaginable. There were some months where working on my historical wardrobe and hand stitching in general really helped me cope with my mental health and reduce stress. I suppose that can be one of the wonderful side effects of sewing your own wardrobe. My focus this year was mostly getting better at fit because my fit was honestly not great for some of the garments in my first year sewing, which is as expected when you're just starting out with a new hobby. My plan for this new sewing year is to focus on mostly continuing to sew a practical historical wardrobe, with a focus on workwear and making more of my ethnic dress since I'm a Tatar. In general, my goal is to always make the things that I sew wearable, as I don't want them to just sit in a closet collecting dust. Everything I made this year is completely hand-stitched, and I will be giving estimates of how much time each garment or ensemble took. But I must warn you that these are really rough estimates because I'm not great at tracking my sewing hours. To begin, I had been wanting to sew an 18th century quilted petticoat for a while, inspired by some extants that I've seen in museums. I bought some pre-quilted silk and cotton fabric in a sale for a pretty good price, so I knew it was time to make one. I absolutely love this quilted petticoat and it gets a lot of use in winter especially because it essentially feels like wearing a giant duvet. I also have a bit of this fabric left, so in the future I'd like to make a matching pair of quilted jumps, which essentially is going to end up looking like an 18th century version of a tracksuit. This quilted petticoat took me around 30 hours to sew. Next up are these 1890s cycling bloomers. These are extremely practical and I love wearing them everywhere. I have yet to actually take them cycling though. They are made from a tweed wool which drapes really nicely and they have a back button closure which I now feel like maybe was a mistake as I originally didn't add in a placket. But before shooting this video and showing them off, I finally added a placket so that way I could feel more secure wearing them out and about. That way I wouldn't end up with any unnecessary wardrobe malfunctions either. <laughs> I used some antique mother of pearl buttons to really give them a historical feel, and I've lined them with a linen so they breathe super well. They took around 40 hours to hand sew. I released this adorable Victorian apron tutorial last year, and with it I made the third item on this year's list, a lovely linen apron. If you'd like to make one yourself, you can do so with this tutorial, and it's a very beginner-friendly project. This apron took around maybe six hours to hand sew, a very quick make. Then it's the entirety of the Berry Dress Ensemble, which I filmed a whole YouTube series about. It exists in a separate playlist in case you're curious about the in-depth process and want to see a full reveal. The ensemble is an 1860s style day gown and consists of a cartridge pleated skirt, a long sleeve bodice, a Swiss waist or sash, and a bonnet. All of them inspired by one of my favorite things, berries. This was my first proper time having a go at hat making, so I'm really proud with how this bonnet turned out especially. I wear these pieces quite often actually in my day-to-day -day life, and I love mixing them with different accessories too. In all, this ensemble took around 215 hours to hand sew. This next project isn't exactly something I made, but rather something I altered. I bought a wool replica bustle skirt secondhand off eBay for about 20 quid. It was definitely way too big for me, so I trimmed the hem and pleated down the waistband, turning it essentially into some type of 1890s-ish walking skirt. I'm super happy with how it turned out, and this project was a one-night make and only took me about five hours. Yay for alterations! Next up is a Cossack Bashlik, which is a winter hood of sorts. I made this one in honor of my late grandfather who passed away in 2021 and he was a Cossack himself. This was a fairly simple make and I filmed an entire YouTube video on the making of this hood if you'd like to see the process and perhaps make one yourself. I made it from a lovely autumnal tartan thick wool, lining it with this luscious silk in a stunning green color. I also had a go at making my own silk tassels, which was a fun little project. If I could do anything differently, it would be to make the fronts of the hood a bit longer and also to somehow make the hood a little less pointy, perhaps by elongating it. But to be fair, some of the original bushliks that the Cossacks wore can sometimes be quite pointy as well. This bushlik took around 15 or 20 hours to hand stitch. I also made a very regal feeling cape to match the bushlik. I heavily cartridge pleated the neckline in order to give it more of a stripe 
striking look. And I used an antique belt buckle as the clasp at the neck to give the cloak a Celtic-ish feel. It's extremely toasty wearing this cape and perfect for winter. Funnily enough, the first time I wore this garment out was on my birthday back in January. And whilst I was out for a walk, a bird actually pooped on me. So I guess it's officially been christened by nature as well. They say it's good luck, so I suppose this is a lucky cape now. Thankfully it's wool, so it was super easy to clean. I have a YouTube video on the making of this cloak as well. The one thing I would have done differently in hindsight is to canvas the standing collar, as I ended up having to sew in a series of boning channels for additional support. But I feel if I had canvassed the collar, it would have even more of that needed structure. I'll definitely be canvassing the collars of future cloaks. This garment took around 40 hours to hand sew. One of the things that I wear most in my wardrobe is next. It's this 1860s Garibaldi blouse made of a reddish purple linen. It's extremely comfortable and pairs wonderfully with many of my other garments, in addition to garments from other decades in history, as I really like to mix and match decades a lot. I also decided to add extra details and sew honeycomb smocking at the wrist cuffs for an additional touch. This blouse in total took me maybe around 35 hours to hand sew. Very spur of the moment one night, I randomly decided I felt like sewing a new skirt out of a pretty embroidered silk from my stash. I ended up making this early 1890s style walking skirt over the course of the next few days and I absolutely love the way it looks. My waist measurement fluctuates a lot, which is very natural and happens to a lot of people. And so I've set two hooks for the same eye closure, just so that the size is a bit more adjustable. I love pairing this one up with poofy historical blouses. I basically just went on a sewing marathon over the course of three days. This garment took me around 25 or 30 hours to complete. As a practical spring garment, I made another cloak, but this time out of a water-resistant historical material called oil skin. I felt like this lighter weight cloak would help to keep me dry during rainy spells, essentially functioning as a poncho or an umbrella. I've worn this cloak in the rain and can confirm that it does indeed work incredibly well and I lined it with some purple linen cotton in my stash and this is another one of those spur of the moment makes that I decided to do late one evening. I heavily cartridge pleated the neckline once again to make the cloak more visually interesting and more voluminous. This oilskin cloak took me maybe around 50 hours to hand stitch because oilskin is actually surprisingly hard to sew by hand. I messed up the hood of this garment and I actually sewed it backwards only realizing once it was already done. So I had to improvise and ended up cartridge pleating any excess fabric to try and mitigate the issue. I think it works well enough, but it's not exactly the prettiest. So if I ever make this cloak in the future, I'll I'll definitely be making the hood differently and won't sew the thing together backwards. In complete juxtaposition to the very practical oilskin cloak, I had about a month to make an entire evening ensemble for a Victorian ball. Thus, the grape gown was born, which is an early 1890s Italian Renaissance revival gown. I made a series of YouTube videos documenting the entire process if you're curious what exactly went into making the garment. I just kept on making more and more components for the ensemble, including the bodice with undersleeves and a skirt. In addition to this adorable grape reticule, a capelet where I attached a bunch of braid to create this tendril pattern, and also this soft hat, which I really think adds to the sort of Shakespearean look. Oh, and I also made a jabot, which I sort of tucked underneath the whole gown, and I also painted leather shoes for the ensemble, and I even made a detachable train, which got barely any use, I must admit. All things considered, I'm extremely proud of this ensemble, and I feel like it's actually some of my best work from this year. I had to fiddle with the fit a lot, and had such a limited time frame to sew it in, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. The entire grape gown took me around 200 to 250 hours to hand stitch, so if you do the math, I basically didn't have much of a life outside of working and sewing. Then, after this very impractical evening gown, I really started to focus deeply on workwear. I began making a series of wrappers, which I'm still currently working on. The first one I made is this 1860s tartan wrapper made from a very lightweight wool and lined with linen. The belt is what gives this garment its shape, and the wrapper is quite a fascinating style as it was worn by all classes of people, at least in Britain. Since this one is quite simple, it wouldn't be unlikely that a working class individual just might have worn one like this in the 1860s. I also kept the hem length quite short for that reason, as it's meant to be a very functional historical garment in my wardrobe. I can also either dress this wrapper down or accessorize it a bit by adding pieces like this sawn tag or this snood, which were both knit by one of my friends. This example is actually one of my usual go-to historical looks these days, in particular for spring and autumn. 
The next wrapper I completed is a single layer summer linen wrapper, and I used the same pattern as I did for the wool wrapper. It's one by Laughing Moon number 118. It comes with different sleeve and collar variations, so it's grown to become one of my favorite patterns. This is another super versatile piece that is very reminiscent of garments worn by the working class. I'm able to accessorize it with all sorts of ribbons or belts, hats and brooches, but I also sewed a contrasting detachable collar and a belt to go with this look. Each of these wrappers took me maybe around 40 to 50 hours to hand stitch, so around 80 to 100 hours for both wrappers. The final thing I made this year is this late Victorian cape. I actually took a pattern off of an antique cape in my collection, and I just released that pattern for sale, actually, for a mere four pounds. So if you'd like to make one yourself, it's available on my website, vbirchwood.com. Or if you join any of my Patreon tiers, you'll get free and early access to any of my patterns. I mainly made this cape in order to test the pattern before release and to be able to take detailed images of the construction steps for the pattern. But now I also have a lovely lovely cape to wear, which I'm going to really enjoy in the winter when the weather gets cold. This cape took me around 50 hours to hand sew, as this ruffle was incredibly fiddly and time consuming. And yes, it's still pinned down as I didn't quite get around to sewing it completely before releasing the pattern, as it didn't really matter. I guess it's something else to work on during an upcoming weekend. And that's everything I made in my second year sewing. It's wild to imagine where my hand sewing journey began and where it is now two years later. I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens over the course of the next year and sharing it with all of you. More than anything, I feel like I'm really Really beginning to solidify and understand my own personal style a bit better, so I feel far more equipped to make clothes that I actually love, wear, and continuously mend and repair. If you'd like to see everything I made during my first year sewing, be sure to view this video next. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in two weeks for a rather exciting video.